Now we'll look at two examples of solving rational equations. A common method for solving rational equations is to clear the fractions from the equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by a common denominator and then solve the resulting equation. However, there are two important things we need to do when solving a rational equation. First, we need to determine the excluded values. The excluded values are the values that make any of the denominators equal to zero, which will obviously not be solutions to the equation. And then second, when we clear the fractions from the equation and solve the resulting equation, sometimes we get algebraic solutions to the resulting equation that do not actually satisfy the original equation. And these are called extraneous solutions. So it is important when solving a rational equation that we always verify our solutions work by checking them in the original equation. So looking at the first example, notice there are no variables in the denominators, and therefore there are no excluded values. So down here we'll say none for excluded values. For the next step, we'll clear the fractions from the equation. Notice that six times eight is equal to 48, so 48 would be a common denominator, so we could multiply both sides of the equation by 48 to clear the fractions, but instead, let's identify the least common denominator. The least common denominator is the least common multiple of six and eight. So let's list multiples of six and multiples of eight. Multiples of six are six, 12, 18, 24, 30, and so on. Multiples of eight are eight, 16, 24, 32, and so on. Notice 24 is the least common multiple of six and eight, which means 24 is the LCD. So to clear the fractions from the equation, we will multiply both sides of the equation by 24. So on the left, we'll have 24 times 100x plus eight divided by six plus three. This must equal 24 times the quantity three x plus eight divided by eight. On the left side, we'll distribute 24. So we'll have 24 times the quantity x plus eight divided by six plus 24 times three must equal 24 times the quantity three x plus eight divided by eight. Now let's simplify here before multiplying. If it's helpful, we can write 24 as a fraction with the denominator of one here as well as here. 24 and six share a common factor of six. There's one six and six, and four sixes and 24. To so bring the four, we get four x plus 32, plus 24 times three equals 72 equals, on the right side, eight and 24 share a common factor of eight. There's one eight and eight, and three eighths and 24. So we distribute three, which gives us nine x plus 24. Notice how the resulting equation no longer has fractions. So now we'll solve this equation for x, and then verify it does satisfy the original equation. 32 plus 72 is equal to 104. So we have four x plus 104 equals nine x plus 24. We need to have the x terms on one side, so let's subtract four x on both sides of the equation. Simplifying, this would be zero, so we have 104 equals nine x minus four x is five x. Now we'll isolate five x by subtracting 24 on both sides. Simplifying, this difference is 80, so we have 80 equals five x. This difference is zero. So we have 80 equals five x. To solve for x, we divide both sides by five. Simplifying, we have x equals 80 divided by five is equal to 16. So right now we think the solution is x equals 16, but it's important that we verify the solution actually satisfies the original equation. So we'll substitute 16 for x in the original equation, which gives us 16 plus eight divided by six plus three equals three times 16 plus eight divided by eight. Well here we have 24 divided by six plus three equals, on the right side, three times 16 is 48, 48 plus eight is 56. So 56 divided by eight. On the left, 24 divided by six is four, four plus three is seven. On the right, 76 divided by eight is also seven. So our solution 
is x equals 16. Let's look at the second example on the next slide. We begin by identifying any excluded values. Looking at the denominators, notice how if x is equal to two, we have a zero in the denominator here, and because division by zero is undefined, we must exclude two as a possible solution. So down here, we'll list two as an excluded value. Sometimes we also just say x can't equal two. The next step is to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. So for this example, let's analyze the denominators and build the LCD. So looking at the first denominator, notice how the LCD must contain a factor of x minus two. Looking at the second denominator, notice how the LCD must contain a factor of two. Looking at the last fraction, the LCD must contain a factor of four, Right now it only contains a factor of two. If we multiply it by another factor of two, the LCD now has a factor of four. So now all the factors of the denominators are in the LCD, and therefore this product is the LCD. The LCD is four times the quantity x minus two. So now we multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. So we'll have four times the quantity x minus two times four divided by the quantity x minus two plus one half. This must equal four times the quantity x minus two times three fourths. Let's go ahead and show the distribution on the left side. So we'd have four times the quantity x minus two times four divided by the quantity x minus two plus four times the quantity x minus two times one half equals the right side remains the same. If it's helpful, we can write the LCD in fraction form with the denominator of one. And now we'll simplify before multiplying. Notice here the numerator and denominator share a common factor of x minus two, which simplifies to one. The product is now just four times four, which equals 16. So 16 plus two and four share a common factor of two. There's one, two, and two, and two twos and four. So we distribute two, which gives us two x minus four. On the right side, the numerator and denominator share a common factor of four. Four divided by four simplifies to one. So the product is three times the quantity x minus two, which equals three x minus six. And now we solve the resulting equation. On the left side, 16 minus four is equal to 12. So we have 12 plus two x equals three x minus six. Let's get the x terms on one side of the equation. So we'll subtract two x on both sides. Simplifying this is zero, so we have 12 equals three x minus two x is one x or x. So we have the equation 12 equals x minus six. Solve for x, we add six to both sides of the equation. Simplifying. We have 18 equals x, and therefore the solution is x equals 18. Notice 18 is not the excluded value. We still should verify it does satisfy the original equation. So now we'll substitute 18 for x back into the original equation. So we'd have four divided by the quantity 18 minus two plus one half equals three fourths. 18 minus two is equal to 16, so we have four sixteenths plus one half equals three fourths. Notice four sixteenths simplifies to one fourth and one half is equivalent to two fourths. And notice that one fourth plus two fourths is three fourths. Three fourths equals three fourths is correct. Verifying our solution is correct. I hope you found this helpful.